The only altimeter feeding information to the auto throttle was the captain's, and it was wrong. It showed minus eight feet throughout most of flight 1951's approach. It's beginning to look like the faulty radio altimeter triggered the events that led to the crash. Investigators need to know what went wrong with it. On a 737, the transmitting and receiving antennas for both radio altimeters are lined up underneath the cockpit. Three of the antennas were all but destroyed in the crash. They can't be tested. But one antenna from the captain's side is undamaged. Investigators consider two possibilities. A failure of one of the components, or some sort of interference that caused the faulty reading. The only component that survived the crash checks out. The computers that control the system also work. But investigators do make a curious discovery about them. They aren't the same ones that were installed on the plane when it was delivered to Turkish Airlines seven years ago. This find changes the focus of the investigation. The maintenance aspect of this accident aircraft was one that we looked at uh, as deeply as we could. When the plane's maintenance log is studied, investigators find that the radio altimeter on this plane had a problematic history. We got additional data from Turkish Airlines. And that data showed that on this one aircraft of the past, I believe, over a thousand flights, there was about 150 flights that had faulty radio altimeter systems. The documents show that a little more than a year before the crash, both computers were replaced because of complaints they were causing faulty readings. One of the incidents involved a radio altimeter reading of minus eight feet. So that was telling us that there was a, an issue that had been there. The issue did not just occur on this flight. The faulty readings persisted. Mechanics repeatedly swapped the computers and replaced the antennas to try to solve the problem. It's determined that Turkish Airlines tried several ways to fix the altimeter, but they couldn't find a repair that worked. At the time of the accident, Turkish Airlines had a fleet of 52 Boeing 737-800 series airplanes. It's on page 93. When we reviewed the maintenance data, we found that radio altimeter problems had been written up several times on both the accident airplane and the fleet. Investigators discover that in the year before the crash, Turkish Airlines dealt with 235 system faults with the radio altimeters on their 737s. Fixes ranged from replacing and exchanging antennas, cleaning of the systems, exchanging and replacing the computers, and installing gaskets to shield the system from possible water damage. It's not like they weren't doing anything about it. The Turkish Airlines maintenance personnel knew that the radio altimeter problem was one of their highest issues with regard to maintenance. Sixteen of those altimeter repairs were made to the plane that crashed in February 2009. If the problem was so widespread, investigators wonder why it hadn't caused serious problems before this accident. They don't have to dig too far back to find out that in fact it had on this very same plane. On two recent flights, they had the exact same problem. Twice in the 48 hours leading up to the accident, the radio altimeter showed a negative reading, putting the plane into retard flare mode. Both times, the crew noticed the problem, disengaged the auto throttles, and brought the plane in for a safe landing. You just disconnect it and fly the airplane. In the months after the crash, other operators come forward with similar stories. In Australia, in the Netherlands, in Canada, in Austria, pilots report their 737s going into retard flare mode 
when the left radio altimeter showed a faulty reading. Each of those crews reacted the same way. They disengaged the auto throttle and pushed the power back up manually. They all landed safely. Things are going to break on an airplane, and usually you're able to, to identify that and take that out of, uh, make it so that it's not a threat for the landing. In 2008, Boeing received a whopping 2,569 reports of faulty radio altimeters on their latest 737s. But very few of those cases involved the plane going into retard flare mode. Hardly any reports at all. Boeing also tried but couldn't find the cause of the failures. They concluded that the radio altimeter problem was not a threat to safety because the 737 gives off enough warnings so that crews can intervene and land safely. In fact, in every instance where the radio altimeter failed, crews were able to recover. Turkish Airlines Flight 1951 seems to be the one exception. Investigators still don't know why. It really got us wondering of what happened. And that's when we started to look really closely at the, at the actions of the flight crews while it was on that final approach in less than 1,000 feet. Finally, as investigators again revisit the last minutes of Flight 1951, the circumstances of the tragedy become clear. They see a remarkable sequence of events that transpire to bring down this plane. So, what was happening when the plane went into retard flare mode? They discover that the plane went into landing mode and pulled back power at the worst possible moment, exactly as the crew was descending to meet the glide slope. It masked what was actually happening. As the crew configured their plane to drop down to meet the glide slope, they expected the plane to slow down as part of that maneuver. But the plane was actually slowing down because the computer was in landing mode. That's why none of the three pilots said anything about the throttles moving to idle. It was insidious. Where it first captured in the retard mode, it didn't hurt them at all because they were actually high and they were a little bit fast. And the pilots actually wanted the power back anyway. In fact, the throttles may have already been in the flight idle mode as they were trying to get down and slow down. Right, the trouble starts here at 8,300 feet. 13 miles out from the airport, minutes before the crash. Amsterdam. Turkish 1951 descending 7000, speed 250. Uh, Turkish 1951 descend to 4000. Speed okay for ILS 1B. Right. Radio ultimate. Uh, would the crew have known that because of that radio altimeter they would have gone to a retard flare mode in the throttles? No. It was a common problem at the airline that the crew couldn't see the risk it posed this flight. We have an airplane that was malfunctioning in a very minor way, but in a way that if not caught could and did metastasize into something much more virulent. Turkish 1951, descent to 2000. 2000, 1951. Left heading 210, clear approach, 18 right. Left 210, clear ILS, Turkish 1951. Now left, at 210 degrees, maintaining 2,000 feet, brings the flight in right here, 5.5 miles out. We now have to intercept the glide slope from above. At 2,000 feet, with the glide slope below them, the pilots have to reduce their speed while descending steeply. Speed 140. They believe the throttles are moving back for the descent to the glide slope. In fact, the auto throttle is slowing the plane down because it's gone into landing mode. It will continue to slow the plane until it stalls. What we found is that when the flight crew was doing their before landing checklist, each one of them was doing something while they should have been monitoring their airspeed. For the